Hey guys, you know it's Joe Jaguar, your friend in astronomy, science, and telescopes, and all that great stuff. For you guys who don't know me, I have been in the hobby since about 1993, uh, when a comet smashed into Jupiter in 1994. Uh, but it was huge news in 93 that it was coming up and it took like 13 months for that to happen. The impacts of that comet, it actually broke up into 21 pieces, uh, left like 21 scars or impacts on Jupiter. The sizes of those were the size of the Earth. You heard me correctly. So think of it this way. If that was... If Jupiter did not grab it and pull it towards it and it came on Earth, that's the 21 shots the size of Earth, we would have been totally annihilated. So great thing that we have Jupiter in our solar system. So let's talk today about a lot of people kind of don't know, you know, there's like acromats out there, there's uh, double-lit uh, apochromatics or ED with double lenses, uh, triple lenses, triple lenses. There's so many different type of refractors that sometimes I hear people don't know where they fall in their category or scale. However, I do have a disclaimer. Even though I'm gonna give you the elementary uh, to all the way to the best, uh, type of lenses. It just depends how you make it. You can make a doublet with a best glass that can approach very close to a triplet if it's made very shorter. So there's so many ways to make and design and even how good they polish the lenses because a lot of times people just buy based on what glass type there is and they really don't know how it's polished and sometimes that can even be more important than the actual lens kind. So I just want to make a disclaimer that there is no 100% way to say that this is the exact formula. Sometimes depending how short or long or whatever and what type of glass they use, you can make one that's better than the other. This is just a sample of what glass types there are and theoretically how good and better and better they get as we go down the list. Okay, so I got my board here, and we're gonna talk about, now there is one that almost nobody has heard of, and it's called a singlet, where it's just one piece of lens. Okay, these were like the first generation type of refractors where they only had one lens, and those suckers were F30, F40, F50. They were humongous, but that was the only way to correct the chromatic aberration or the false color, the fringing, whatever you want to say. But, you know, in the last, you know, let's say 50, 60 years, uh, 70 years, whatever it is, we have made doublet acromats. So then it became then the doublet air spaced acromat, where it has a crown and a flint and that type of thing. Those are almost every refractor on the market is like that. Now, you can get two kinds now. You can get the short tube, which is going to have a lot of false color. And that kind is mostly rated for wide field, deep sky viewing or low power. Um, but if you get even a doublet acromat, okay, and an F8 to F10, it's going to be pretty clear. It's going to be, uh, especially on the sun, moon and planets. Remember sun, you need a solar filter, but it's going to be fairly uh, good. It's going to be uh, the image is going to be uh, pretty good for most people out there. There'll still be a little bit of halo or that what they call false color, but it's going to be to a minimal. Now, starting in about I would say 2004 ish is when we started coming with cheap uh, ED um, refractors. Um, now they had Apple chromatics way before in the 80s and 90s, that type of thing. Now, the problem is they were very expensive. Just to give you an example, let's say back in the 90s, early 90s and the 80s, you could probably get, let's say, a four inch refractor for about 4,000 US. 
Now we're not, remember, we're talking about 30 to 40 years ago. So we're not including inflation. So let's say that probably be closer to $6,000 uh, right now for a four inch, uh, around there-ish, okay? And let's say in Canadian, uh, that'd probably be like $8,000 for a four inch apochromatic. So we're talking serious money back there for what most people would say is a smallish, uh, or I guess mid-size refractor. Now these days, up about here, uh, the 2004 area, uh, is when they came out with ED. Now the first generation ED was with 51 glass. Okay, and what that did is correct the uh, chromatic aberration of fringing, the false color, to maybe 50%, let's say. So for instance, you didn't need a sucker that was F20 anymore. You can basically make it like, let's say, uh, well, a lot of them back then were made like F7 and F8, and they probably had the same color correction as something around F15. F15 is actually fairly large, depending what size you had. There was companies that still made acromats, uh, doublets, in about like a four inch F15 was very popular. There was still some color around high power views of uh, Venus, uh, the moon, uh, and some brighter stars, but uh, it wasn't too bad on the planets. But the ED now around this generation, uh, just that's when a, it started to become cheaper and cheaper. And again, you can make them a little bit shorter and it probably was about equivalent to about an F15 with an ED glass. Now, of course, it depends you know, if we talk about a 60, 80 millimeter, four inch, uh, that's just too much info and too many samples. But then came the uh, 53 glass in a doublet, okay? And that corrected, that was the next generation. And that was now for uh, most people uh, I mean, it was still kind of expensive. So let's talk about one, for instance. Skywatcher made uh, the, well, first they had the uh, Gold Pro. I believe I showed you guys in one of my videos two years ago. So it looked like a goldish or champagne color. Um, that was 53 glass. The uh, Black Diamond, the Evo Star was 53 doublet. And being F9, it's virtually color free. It is F9, so it is a little bit long, but it's approaching like what triplets uh, or beginning triplets could be. But this is the next step, would be a doublet with 53 glass. So a lot of your entry level uh, doublets um, in the lower price range are probably still, even to this day, is gonna have a doublet with 51 glass. For a lot of people, that's still a good compromise, especially if it's like F7, F8 type of thing. It's still pretty good uh, controlling that color. It's not perfect, but it's also keeping the price lower because it is cheaper. So then you got this level here. And now, now you get into, um, well, they also had fluorite. Um, fluorite doublets was just, I would say, equal or just a hair smidgen better than the 53 glass, or it'd be virtually hard to tell, but it was also expensive. So now we get into the triplets, okay? So in the triplets, you could have like a triplet with 51 or 61 glass. So again, you can make it again shorter and it'll correct um, most of that false color again. Um, a lot of telescopes, like my Mead 6000, 130, uh, Mead makes the 60, 115, and the 130. Same, it's the exact same as, as the Orion, uh, the Eon. Uh, they're very good scopes. Now, if you get into astrophotography, most people want a triplet. So if you're on a budget a triplet, because they can be very expensive, like for instance, a 130 triplet, in Canada, it's probably about $4,000 before tax. Um, and then uh, with tax is gonna be even more. So a triplet with 53 or 61 or equivalent to that type of glass is a very, um, some people may say you don't need triplets for visual, but 
I like it because it also, what happens is the more you correct that false color, the better image you also get. It's sharper as well. Of course, cooldown time is longer for triplets than doublets. There's an extra lens in there, and it takes a long time for that cooling to get to that, especially the middle one in, in the middle. Maybe even the back one because it's kind of sealed. Now, the next generation triplet is going to be, so a triplet with 53 is that it becomes, and remember too, this scale here, it gets more pricier and pricier as you go down this list. But the true, let's say, imagers, I would say, would probably want a triplet 53. Of course, it does cost a lot then. Now, you get to the top dogs, and there's not too many companies that do. This, this is only a triplet 53. One lens, okay, is one lens is a 53. Now, there is a company like, for instance, the Takahashi TOA. I've showed you that guys before, where they use a triplet with two lenses of the 53. So let's say, for instance, the TAC, uh, the TOA, I got the 150, but they make a 130 and that type of thing. It comes with a triplet 53, but two of those, two of those are 53 glasses. So you really cannot get any better than that. However, very expensive. A brand new Takahashi 150, let's say, just to give you an idea, right? Uh, brand new, and I'm just talking about the tube itself, what we call the OTA, it's just a telescope, no mount, no finder scope, no rings, no diagonal, bare bones, is about 20,500 Canadian, add the tax, I uh, know you're probably at about uh, 22,000 at least, by the time you add the rings, the whatever bar you wanna put on it, uh, finder scope, diagonal, whatever mount, on that sucker, you're probably getting very close to 30,000 Canadian. So take that into consideration. The images would be amazing and clear, but you don't necessarily need that for visual. So anyway, guys, again, this is kind of how it went. Singlet, doublets, and then a doublet with 51, doublet with 53. Then you have like a fluorite, which kind of is equivalent to the 53 glass. Um, then you have a triplet with 51 or 61, and then you have a triplet with 53. Then you have a triplet using two 53 or equivalent lens. So I hope that helps you. Again, I'm going to say the disclaimer again. That does not mean in any way, shape, or form that some of these can't perform better than another one. It depends how good they made it, how good they polished that lens, um, and what type of mating element sometimes the manufacturer or the person used. But in general, I would say it will go in this type of formula, type of thing. So if you guys are looking for that type of thing, then okay. But you can find very nice telescopes, even some people still use a doublet Acromat. And there's nothing wrong with that. If that's what you could afford, uh, you know, make sure it's F8 to F10, that type of thing. Um, F12 sometimes if it's an 80 millimeter or something like that. But again, the new generation, people are just kind of getting a doublet with 51 glass. And that controls a good chunk of that color aberration. Um, it's not perfect, but I guess for the, the, the beginning person, but it does drive up the price a little bit depending on what size you want. Okay, guys, that's the end of this episode. Joe Jaguar, like, comment, and subscribe. If you know anybody that wants to get into astronomy, send them my link if you like. If there's anybody on the forums and I have a video that someone asks uh, uh, for, send them my link and say, here's a video, take a look at this guy. It's called Joe Jaguar. And for any of you guys that wanted to know this type of scale, again, don't, it's not written in stone, but it's a good guideline if you're really looking for that kind of information. That's it. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you next time.